Hey there, everybody. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing fine. Doing pretty good myself. Today, we're going to be looking at Thomcraft 3. In fact, it's going to be more than just this one episode. It's going to be a multi-episode kind of look at Thomcraft 3. Kind of a guide, if you will, or a crash course. However you want to take it. Anyway, to get started, there's a few things that you need to look out for in your world. One of the first things is silverwood trees. These are magical trees, and in the center of them they have an aura node. So, if you're going to be doing Thongcraft stuff, you might as well start out somewhere next to one of these. Because they have a pretty high aura around them, usually. Other thing you need to look out for is these great wood trees. These great wood trees are used in a few of the Thomcraft crafting stuff. Recipes, not stuff. <clears throat> although you although you cannot use the wood at all to make planks. Other things that you need to pay attention to are these new ores that you will find when you're digging in the ground. You have Cinnabar, um, darn I forgot, Amber, yes, Amber Bearing Stone, and Viz Infused Stone. Each of the colors represents an element, water, earth, wind, fire, magic, and the silver color is a dull one. That's when the Viz has kind of bled out of the stone and back into the aura. Usually that happens when you've drawn a lot of power from the aura when doing magic. Now the viz ores are able to be harvested using a wooden pickaxe or grater, and cinnabar and amber require an iron pickaxe. One last thing you can look out for is this new kind of tower you'll find in villages. These towers typically have a chest in them, from what I have seen at least which will have a few random items in it that can help you along in your thaumaturgic endeavors. Now the person that usually resides in these houses is a wizard villager. I've already traded with him trying to get him to be able to trade more things. Unfortunately he doesn't seem to want to offer anything new. Anyway, let's go ahead and go inside, get started. Please ignore the fact that there's no roof there. The fire kind of burned it away. Anyway, to get started, you're going to need a wand and a bookcase or a bookshelf. Now, in order to craft a wand, you simply need a golden nugget, a stick, and any kind of viz shard. And then you place down a bookshelf, right-click on it, and you'll get the Thaumonomicon. You have to right click on it with a wand. And looking at the Thaumonomicon it tells you exactly how to create this wand. <clears throat> it also lets you know information about great wood trees, silver wood, shimmer leaf which is a type of flower you can find growing usually near silver wood trees. Uh, they will drop Quicksilver, which you also can get by smelting cinnabar ore. And there's also cinder pearls. Cinder pearls are usually found in the desert. And you can harvest them and get blaze powder from them. It'll also give you information on aspects of magic, the aura, flux, and the infused ores, which I would already talked about. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. Amber can be used to craft a couple types of blocks. Amber blocks and amber bricks. Amber blocks require four amber, and amber bricks are made of four amber blocks. You can also get your amber back from the amber blocks, although amber is not really used for very much at the moment. Alright, with the wand and Thaumonomicon in hand, 
you're going to need to make some tables, which are crafted out of jungle, out of any kind of wood block and wood slabs. You can place down one table and right click on it with your wand and it turns into a new kind of crafting table. Now this crafting table has a slot in it where you can place your wand and it is an arcane work table, that's right. You also are going to need to make a research table which is it will be acquired by getting scribing tools made out of a glass bottle, a feather, and an ink sack. And by placing two tables and right clicking out with your scribing tools, that turns it into a research desk. Now this brings me to the next thing you're going to need for quite a bit of Thomcraft you're going to need to go out and find some reeds, because you need paper. We'll just go ahead and give myself a stack of paper, which I think you actually need only one stack of paper at most. Now, in the research table, there is a sliding bar here, which affects how thoroughly you're researching the items you are putting in these five slots here. There's cursory, which is just slightly glancing over, and thorough, which is very in-depth. Let's go ahead and grab a few random items. Let's say some iron, coal, some seeds. Oops, seeds. There you go. Now, when you're holding shift and you highlight an item, it will reveal the aspects of that item, the essence or elements, whatever you want to call it. Items can have for anywhere from one to five aspects. Although, <clears throat> darn it. Although some mod items also have aspects because Thomcraft is forge compatible. We'll put that wand over here. Thumb not on there. Get rid of these tables. Now, even though you can have multiple items in here, you only are able to research up to five aspects at a time. So if I throw metal in here, one of the other ones disappears. Now if I start researching, and a research note will appear, and paper will disappear. And you also get this weird looking scroll in the upper left corner. The scroll doesn't really reveal much information until after you've researched a little bit further. Right now we have an obscurus element. That's because we don't really know what element this is. All we really know is it's one of these five. So if we keep on researching, we either get another Obscurus, or one of the elements is revealed. Here we got Fire. So if we switch it over to Thorough, we can get more information from what we're researching, but we'll lose items at a greater rate. As you see, I've already lost one of both Seeds and Coal researching these two elements. Now, as you continue to research, elements might gray out. If elements gray out, it means that element is not part of this research recipe. So you can get rid of any items that are not, attri not contributing to your research, like the seeds. All right, now that we've researched a few elements, we are, it is revealed that we are currently researching niter. And it also tells us what Niter does. But we still have an unknown element. Now you can get a hint at to what other elements might be in a recipe by looking at the description 
Like here it says, could pro prove to be a steady source of light and energy. Well, we've already got energy in the form of potentia, and ignis gives us fire, heat, and burning. We don't really have anything that gives us light, though, so let's try a light source. There's glowstone dust, glowstone itself, or torches. I'll just grab a stack of torches instead, because that says light, and it's the only element that we're really looking to see if it exists in this recipe. And there it is. Now after everything in the research notes are fully researched, your notes will turn into a, a discovery, which looks like a rolled up scroll. You can take that out now and hold it in your hands, and when you right click on it, you learn that research. Now normally this would disappear, but since you're, I'm in creative mode, it stays in my inventory. We're going to act like it disappeared, though. Now, I'm going to keep on going down the basic alchemy stuff. And I will get back to you once I have finished researching everything. Now, I know some of you might want to look at the... might want to know what these research recipes are. Well, I have a couple other videos that show the all the Thomcraft research recipes that I have discovered which I'll have a link in the video right now. And now I will see you in a moment. And welcome back. I've just completed the basic alchemy research, which doesn't actually reveal anything itself. This is just a little milestone marker. <clears throat> Although there are a few recipes that are hidden. For example, if I were to take some food item, let's go with, well, not necessarily food item, I need something that's got meat to it. So let's go with this raw pork chop. If I were to start researching that, magic tallow. Now, as you see on here, there doesn't really seem to be a recipe, anything that looks like magic tallow. But after I take a look at the discovery and look back at my Thaumonomicon, a tile for magic tallow appears. Now, magic tallow can be used to create things like candles, which are a very nice looking alternative to just having torches laying around your place or having nitre floating in the air. They have a nice little flicker effect even on them. As you can see, a candle is made with string and two magic tallow. You can dye them after the candle is made, if you so desire. Now, some of the things I have researched require you to craft them in a pot or a crucible. In order to make a crucible, you need a cauldron and your wand. Simply place the cauldron down and right-click on it, and it turns into a crucible. However, that's not enough. You also need a source of constant heat below it. Now, you can use netherrack with a fire on it, or lava if you really want. As far as I know, that's the only two ways you can heat the cauldron. Crucible, not cauldron. Anyway, moving on. Oops. Now, if we take a look at niter, it tells us that we need the crucible to create this, and we need to put in different elements into the crucible. Now, as it says, you need Ignis, Lux, and Potentia, and it has a little number next to it. This tells you how much Ignis, Lux, and Potentia you need. Now, when you're holding Shift and looking at an item, it tells you exactly how much el of an element it contributes. Coal contributes two Ignis and two Potentia. 
and torches each contribute one lux. So if I were to put in two coal and eight torches, no, six torches, not eight, and take my wand and right click on it, I get out a niter. Ignore this guy for now. He is a little tallow golem, which I'm using just to keep this pot filled. If you want to learn more about golems, click on the annotation that is hovering on that bucket right now. Alright. Now his niter can be placed pretty much anywhere. It doesn't need a wall to sit on or a ground. It can even float in midair like this one is doing. You can even place a niter on a niter. <clears throat> and I believe you can also use niter as a source of fuel. Possibly. I'll double check my Thaumonomicon. Um, no, it doesn't produce enough heat to be used as fuel. Never mind. It's the other one that produces... That can be used as fuel. Alumentum. That requires three Fractus, six Ignis, and six Potentia. So we throw in three coal. And Fractus is able to be acquired by things that are shattered, like cobblestone. You could even get it from cracked stone bricks. Anyway, throw three of these in here. And we right click with the wand, and we got an alimentum. Now keep in mind that while I'm throwing things into here, I am not using up some of the essences that are attributed to some items. Like I just threw in coal and cobblestone. Both of those have stone essences, and I didn't use that at all while making alimentum. So what happened with that is it got released back into the aura. Now if your aura gets too much essences released into it, things can start going wrong. When an essence is released into the aura, it becomes flux. And if you get a high flux level, you can get all sorts of weird effects, but we'll cover that later. For now, we're going to take a look at what Alimentum does. Now, Alimentum can be used as a fuel or as a grenade. Simply hold it in your hand, right-click to throw it in the air, and it explodes as soon as it comes into contact with something. However, the explosion is not significant enough to damage stone. It can blow up wood, though. So be careful around with it if you live in a wooden house. Let's go ahead and clear this stuff out. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Just had to do that one for fun. Sorry. Right, there's another research recipe which is hidden. If I start researching right now, I might be able to figure it out. Yep, gunpowder. You can make gunpowder with magic. Now, gunpowder makes things explode like Alimentum does, so let's give it some practice as well. Come on. There, exchange. Or permutatio. Now, the best way to get permutatio is actually kind of funny. Seeds give you permutatio, and so do eggs. In fact, eggs probably are the best resource you can use for gaining permutatio due to the amount it has. And that unlocks another secret recipe, which allows you to get gunpowder. Now, I do have an issue with the secret recipes. I really don't understand why they exist, why they're hidden, when everything else doesn't tell you any, any information at all about it. So the only difference between these hidden recipes and these recipes is that there's no picture for them. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. Anyway, gunpowder, you just need six Fractus and six Ignis and then you can make gunpowder which is useful if you're having a lot of trouble try taking on creepers the last thing we're going to look at is tr basic transmutation and 
stuff like that. Now, transmutation requires you to throw more items into your crucible. For gold, you need to get put in Karis and Metallum, which Metallum is able to be acquired through pretty much any kind of ingot. And Karis is actually the tricky one. Normally, you get Karis from gold ingots. However, you can also get it from diamonds and lapis lazuli. Since lapis lazuli is pretty abundant, you might probably are going to be using that if you're trying to get gold. Let's grab that. And iron. Now iron has eight. So if I want to use up all metal from it, I would have to get three more lapis. And that should be enough for us to get a couple gold nuggets. More than a couple, actually. Almost enough to make a whole ingot. Now you can also transmute other metals into iron. All that is required is two metal. Tin, which requires three metal and uh, vitreous. Lead, three metal and a uh, vacuous. Copper, three and a uh, victus. And silver, three metal and a uh, permutatio. Now, the tin, lead, copper, and silver are because I have other mods installed that add those ores to the game. Which I think it does that for all forge compatible ores. Other than that, I don't believe there's any other way you can get lead, tin, copper, and silver through Thomcraft. Mostly because they're not in the game with just the vanilla and Thomcraft items. Alright, now that I got that out of the way, there is one more item that kind of borders crafting and alchemy, or artificing and alchemy. And that is Thaumium ingots, which is used in both artificing and alchemy. <laughs> we'll go ahead and get that researched quick. Oops, not with that. And I'm going to actually cheat a little and just use straight up magic essence. We'll cover how to bottle essences later. For now, it's not important. Alright. Now I got Thaumium researched. We can take a look at it. In order to create Thaumium, you're going to need 8 Metallum, or just an iron ingot, and Precantatio. Now the easiest way to get Precantatio is actually kind of funny. You can simply make chiseled sandstone, which has one precantatio uh, essence to it. And since sand is a pretty abundant resource, you should have no problem getting precantatio in that manner. Now, thaumium can be used to create the same tools, which function like iron, but I believe they are much more susceptible to enchantments. Um, yes. The result is a metal harder than iron with the ability to accept enchantments beyond that which iron is normally capable of. Otherwise, they're pretty much the exact same thing as iron. You can also create a new set of armor, which looks pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and get, give you a look at that armor. If I don't keep scrolling past it. Oops. And there you go. A giant <clears throat> giant purple suit with pink highlights. For those who aspire to be battle mages, I assume. Anyway. Speaking of enchantments, there are a few new enchantments that Thomcraft adds. 
Haste, which can be applied to foot gear, which increases your speed. Repair, which will draw upon the aura levels to repair armor and weapons and tools. Potency, which is only applied to wands. Well, actually, the rest of them is only applied to wands, so we'll talk about those when we talk about wands. But I'm going to end the episode here, and next time we're going to take a look at basic artificing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and fave, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and goodbye.